Oh, congratulations on the on the victory! A great performance. Uh, undoubtedly, one of the stars of it is going to be Jimmy Cherisi, a goal and uh, three assists. What were your thoughts specifically on his performance? Yeah, I thought the team was excellent today. I thought we showed probably for the first time a ninety-minute performance. I was a little bit worried at half time that after being so good in the first half and having numerous attempts and only being two goals ahead, which is a, a tricky scoreline, as, as we showed last week as well, that uh, second half wasn't going to be the same. And, and, it, and it was slightly different, uh, but obviously there were lots of chances at both ends and we managed to take our chances. So performance-wise, excellent um, and got our goals. Uh, Jimmy, I thought, had his best game. I thought Jimmy's he's industrious, uh, sometimes the final third product, and that's what attacking players get judged on, whether it's goals or assists, um, have been slightly off, even though he's created things and, and scored one or two goals. But I thought today he was excellent from the start start of the game. So obviously the 60, 70th, 75th minute when I took him off. Uh, very, very mature performance by him. Um, you've now had two wins in a row against uh, two huge wins obviously against a rival and against uh, what you could call a ladder rival where does this put you guys in terms of your season not just in terms of ladder what do you guys think you can now achieve well in the same position as it was uh, before the game you know every, every game is vital in this league I was watching a game yesterday and you know, the, the table changes each result uh, you know every, I think every team wants every, every result to be a draw so they're still in with the shout if if the result doesn't go their way. We had a couple of them five, six, six games ago where we were draw, we drew three and lost three, and we were still in the mix. But obviously we dropped from the position where we started off quite well. The last two games we've you know got into our groove, got into our rhythm. We've taken our chances, which is important, and we've defended for our lives because I tell you, football is about what you do in both boxes, and the the key to it all is defending. Last ditch tackles, blocking, heading, you know, all these things. And on the on the top end of the pitch, it's a little bit of quality and a little bit of luck sometimes as well. So we've got that in the last two games. Carl, has anything been done off the field that's led to this resurgence? Any sort of in team summit or anything like that that's that's led to this this change in fortunes? No, no. We I have regular meetings with the guys, with the players and you know, you, you can't do it for them. Uh, you need to make them understand, you know, yes, we are a good team, uh, but if we don't perform to our level on the weekend, then any team can be any team in this league as shown, you know, and the ones that are able to grind out results when they don't play well are, are sometimes at the top of the table. So um, we've spoken about it at length. I said we've got a couple of really, really important games. Obviously, it was our rivals last week in a huge derby game. And, and today, again, was a very difficult game against a team that obviously went far last year in the playoffs. So we knew it was going to be a difficult game. And it was. You know, it was important we got the first goal. And uh, once we did, then it gave us a little bit more belief. Uh, but it's three points. We move on. Um, there was, I mean, there's still pressure in a sense because you know, it's such a logjam for the final spots, and obviously that's your goal. Does it feel like some of that pressure's been released now on, on you and the players after these last two wins? I don't know. Is the answer? You know, I put pressure on myself because all you can control is what you do as an individual, and I know what you know what my work work day is like, what my working day is like. I fully commit everything I have to try and make this club better, not just uh, on match days, but behind the scenes as well there's a lot of, I said last week there's a lot of work that's going on behind the scenes with regards pathways development the interaction the the academy obviously I work with Crookie on a on a daily basis and we've got to try and make that really important because when you spend money on trying to develop players it's important these pathways are created for them and I said last week and I'll say it again this week you know Mark Natta, Thomas Aquilina, Tate Russell, Tass and Keanu fantastic players and they're getting the opportunity to play in big games of football yes we know we're in a current covid climate but they'd play anyway because their level has been so high and that's one of the remits and we'll continue with that and i've got a few more in the academy that i want to see on that pitch pretty soon as well and that's part of the goal as well as trying to make the playoffs and win games of football on the weekends which is what you guys see and ladies see uh, Stephen Agarkovic made his debut tonight. Uh, Graham Dorans and Jordan Much look pretty good in there as well. So how do you manage that? How do you introduce Stephen to the team with, with that in mind? And, and what sort of dynamic do you think you can have in there as a result? 
Well, I think a couple of weeks ago, people were asking me that I had four forwards or five forwards. And, you know, that was a big issue, apparently, to me. It wasn't. I deal with them individually, and then I speak to them as a group. It's the same now as midfield. Midfield players get suspended, get booked, pick up little injuries. The two boys in the team today I thought were excellent. Much you picked up a yellow card where, you know, I'm not... 100% convinced referees get every decision right, and I didn't want to take that risk. Obviously, I signed Stevie with Geordie going the other way this week. Huge player, Stevie. I know him inside out. I know what he's about, and I've said this on record, and I'll say it again. He is a terrific midfield player. He really is, and you don't, people don't really realise how good he is until you get to work with him because he's the, the complete package. Now he's got to challenge himself a little bit more to get to the level he wants. And he will make players around him better. And that includes Keanu, who played an important role when he came off. So I can, I can change to three midfield players like I did last week, play 4-3-3 three, three, and three of them play. I can play with two. I can play with two tens. I can play with one ten. You know, it just gives me flexibility. But if you're in the team, perform well and stay in the team. Carl, uh, Carl, you mentioned uh, obviously that you, you've got some great young players that you've brought through there, but obviously recruiting guys like uh, uh, Ogarkovic and McDonald adds to the experience quotient as well. Uh, you, you've talked through the season about just trying to find settled combinations and the right balance. Do you, does this in any way complicate the thing situation that you're bringing good players in late in the season, or are you, you're forming ideas now about what your best combination is? It doesn't give me problems at all. I think managers all uh, who've been in the game a while will say to you that you can, can never have enough, of good, enough good players. What I will say, and you know, people have opinions, and rightly so, they have opinions whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. You know, the the narrative here is always about who doesn't play. You know, I don't focus on who doesn't play. I focus on the ones that play because if I played all senior players, all eleven senior players, and no youngster played, I'm sure the narrative would be that Robbo doesn't play young players. We play five young players. The narrative, narrative is we leave really good players on the bench. That's why you have squads. Uh, that's why you have competition for places. Competition brings out the best in people. And if it doesn't, if you, these young boys want to go and learn and play in Europe one day, that's what, that's what life is like over there. So I'm trying to educate them on a daily basis. Obviously, they're getting the match experience as well. But having better players around them who play in their position makes them better. Yes, they, they are unhappy. Maybe they don't play as many minutes as what they would like. But welcome to professional sports. That's a reality. It's how I deal with them to, by the person and obviously then teach them what they need to do. And when they get in the team, it's down to them. What I will say, I give them chances. And if you take, if you take the chance, as I've mentioned, a couple of young players, and you do well, you'll stay in the team. I don't care. Age does not bother me one bit. It's been a season of ebbs and flows where you've put together back-to-back -to -back wins and occasionally good performances. And obviously the, the hype, I guess, will rise a little bit after these two good performances now. How do you kind of balance that, keep that in check, but at least at the same time make sure the players go ahead with confidence? We will just come back to work on Monday and do the same thing. We, we don't change who we are. We don't change what we're about or our thoughts. You know, We know we've got five games left in this campaign and we've got to try and win every game. The, the league is funny. It's very tight. Everyone can beat everyone. So as soon as we drop your guard or you you think you're better than you are, you lose games of football and then you're outside the top six trying to get into the top six. So we won't do that. Obviously, we've got to focus on what we can control. We can control our performance and we'll get back to work on Monday because we've got another big game next week against a very good team. And last one for me. Um, how are you off uh, injury-wise in the squad at the moment? Uh, is everybody OK out of tonight's game? And uh, just in general, you're, you're pretty good on the fitness front at the moment? No, we, we're a little bit banged up um, in relation to a couple of players. Obviously, Wilm was out, Dylan's out. Um, there's one or two others that are carrying knocks as well. Um, that doesn't include today's game. So we've, uh, we'll see how we are. Listen, if you got a knock, then I'll look after you. Again, when you make substitutions, you're trying to protect your players as well. I know they're unhappy sometimes when they come off, but you're doing it for the benefit of them as well because, you know, when the schedule gets tight and compact, it's important you look after the, look after the players so they're at their peak levels because when they're at the peak levels, we perform at a better standard.